dear viewers greetings in this video we are going to see about the bacterium vibrio cholerae uh, first general characteristics of vibrio cholerae vibrio cholerae is a gram negative comma shaped curved rods and it is motile in nature due to the presence of single polar flagella the size of vibrio cholerae is 0.3 micrometer in diameter and 1.3 micrometer in length it belongs to the family vibronaceae and capsules absent endospores also absent the mode of respiration observed in the vibrio cholerae is aerobic respiration or facultative anaerobic respiration the optimum temperature required for the cultivation of vibrio cholerae is 37 degree celsius and the vibrio cholerae can also able to grow between 20 degree celsius to 45 degree celsius optimum ph is 7.6 to 8.6 and regarding the habitat vibrio cholerae are widely present in the brackish water that is the high salinity water and salt water uh, vibrio cholerae was discovered by robert koch in 1884 classification of vibrio cholerae vibrio cholerae is categorized into two types the first type is vibrio cholerae o1 and the second type is vibrio cholerae o139 the first type vibrio cholerae o1 is further categorized into three serotypes and two biotypes the three serotypes are inaba wagawa and hykojima and the two biotypes are classical biotype and Eltor biotype a disease transmission of vibrio cholerae vibrio cholerae infections are mainly transmitted by two modes the first mode is ingestion of contaminated food and the second mode is ingestion of contaminated water virulence factors of vibrio cholerae the ability of the microorganisms to cause the disease is called as virulence and the term virulence was first coined by the scientist louis pasteur virulence factors are the factors which are responsible for causing an infection in human beings here vibrio cholerae have seven virulence factors they are flagella cholera toxin toxin co-regulated pilus chemotaxis protein accessory cholera enterotoxin zonula occludens toxin and finally neuramidases uh, flagella supports the vibrio cholerae for its motility cholera toxin results in hypersecretion of electrolytes and water uh, toxin co-regulated phylus helps in the adherence to the intestinal mucosal cells the chemotaxis protein acts as a adhesion factor accessory cholera enterotoxin increases the intestinal fluid secretion zonula occludens toxin increases the in intestinal permeability and neuramidases modifies the cell surfaces to increase gm1 binding site for cholera toxin an incubation period for vibrio cholerae is uh, 2 to 3 days and the infectious dose depends on the gastric acidity because uh, lower acidity levels reduces the number of vibrios uh, which are required for the infection pathogenesis of cholera toxin producing vibrio cholerae vibrio cholerae are able to adhere to the mucosal cell layers by means of uh, uh, two genes the first one is tcp encoded by the tcp gene complex and the second one is chemotaxis proteins encoded by the cep genes uh, thus the tcp is important both as a receptor for the cholera toxin cholera toxin binds to the ganglioside gm1 receptor on the intestinal epithelial cells after binding of the cholera toxin with the ganglioside gm1 receptors the active portion of the cholera toxin that is a subunit is internalized interacts with g proteins that control adenyl cyclase leading to the catabolic conversion of adenosine triphosphate to cyclic adenosine monophosphate and this result in a hypersecretion of water and electrolytes uh, severely infected patients 
can lose as much as 1 liter of fluid per hour during the height of the disease. Uh, such a tremendous loss of fluids would normally flush the organisms out of the gastrointestinal tract. Non adherent stains are unable to establish infection. And next, pathogenesis of zonula occludens toxin and accessory cholera, to cholera enterotoxin producing Vibrio cholerae. In the absence of cholera toxin, Vibrio cholerae O1 can still produce significant diarrhea through the action of the zonula occludens toxin and accessory cholera enterotoxin. As the name implies, the zonula occludens toxin loosens the tight junctions of the zonula occludens of the small intestine mucosa, leading to increased intestinal permeability and the enterotoxin produces increased fluid secretion. Clinical diseases of Vibrio cholerae. Vibrio cholerae results in two clinical diseases. The first clinical disease is cholera and the second clinical disease is gastroenteritis. The first clinical disease caused by the Vibrio cholerae is cholera. The clinical manifestation of cholera begins an average of 2 to 3 days after ingestion of the bacteria with the abrupt onset of watery diarrhea, vomiting and nausea. As more fluid is lost, the stool specimen becomes colorless and odorless, free of protein and speckled with mucus that is called as rice water stools. The resulting severe fluid and electrolyte loss can lead to dehydration, painful muscle cramps, metabolic acidosis or bicarbonate loss, hypokalemia or hypovolemic shock or potassium loss, cardiac arrhythmia and renal failure. The signs and symptoms of dehydration includes rapid heart rate, loss of skin elasticity, low blood pressure, thirst, muscle cramps, dry mucous membrane including the, including the inside of mouth, throat, nose and eyelids. If not treated, dehydration can lead to shock and death in a matter of hours. The mortality rate is 60% in untreated patients but less than 1% in patients who are promptly treated with replacement of lost fluids and electrolytes. The second clinical disease caused by the Vibrio cholerae is gastroenteritis. Vibrio cholerae causes gastroenteritis which is observed as a milder form of diarrheal disease and it can occur in toxin negative strains of Vibrio cholerae. Toxic or toxin negative strains of uh, Vibrio cholerae can also cause extraintestinal infections such as septicemia. Uh, particularly in the patients with liver diseases or hematologic malignancies. Laboratory diagnosis of Vibrio cholerae. The first diagnostic method is microscopic examination. Under gram staining, the Vibrio cholerae was observed as pink colored gram negative comma shaped curved rods. And in motility test, the Vibrio cholerae tests are highly motile. Uh, next, call the morphology on culture medium. And in nutrient agar, Vibrio cholerae colonies are moist, translucent, round disc, and measuring 1 to 2 mm in diameter with a bluish tinge in a transmitted light and a distinctive order. In McConkey agar, lactose fermenting uh, pink colonies are observed after prolonged incubation. The TCBS agar is the selective medium for Vibrio cholerae. The full form of the TCBS agar is thiosulfate citrate bile salt sucrose agar. In TCBS agar, Vibrio cholerae produces yellow colored colless. This is the colony morphology of Vibrio cholerae in TCBS agar or thiosulfate citrate bile salt sucrose agar. Next biochemical test for Vibrio cholerae, catalyst test positive Oxidase test positive, urea test negative, indole test positive, methyl red test or MR test positive, VP test or Vogus Prescott test negative, citrate utilization test is variable, 
cholera red test positive onpg disc test positive and string test positive finally treatment and prevention fluid and electrolyte replacement are crucial antibiotics such as azithromycin reduce the bacterial burden and exotoxin production as well as the duration of diarrhea uh, improved hygiene is critical for control and combination of inactivated wholesale and cholera toxin b subunit vaccines provide limited protection and herd immunity dear viewers that's all about the bacterium vibrio cholerae thank you for your support thank you